Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. And joining me live is Luke Zamperini. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Hiba. Thank you for joining me. You will be talking in just a few seconds about a new movie that captures your father's life. It's called Unbroken Path to Redemption. And before we go into the movie and all the great details, here's a look at part of the trailer. What's this? If you're going to trade for London, you have to do it right. Just go nice and easy, see if you can make it all the way around. You think you can run a 4-7 mile again? I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. I don't run to run. I run to win. You will never escape me. Wherever you go, I will find you. Are you sleeping well? You're having any night sweats or nightmares? I just thought I'd be able to forget everything. So, Mr. Zamperini, we just, um, viewers at home, just got a look at part of the new movie. Um, tell us, this must be a very exciting time for your family, and you are the executive producer on the film. So tell me what this really captures um, about your father, Louis Zamperini's life. Okay, so the first Unbroken uh, covered his life story up until he came back from the war. And then that was it. If you read the book Unbroken, you know there were several more chapters that weren't told in the first movie. So Unbroken Path to Redemption picks up at the point when he comes home from the war, goes through his post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, his uh, conversion in the Billy Graham tent, and his going back to Japan in 1950 to forgive his guards face to face. How did the idea of producing a sequel come about and how long has it been in the works? Well, almost immediately when the first film uh, uh, aired, that there was lots of people were wondering what happened to the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we didn't have enough time on the first film to tell the whole story. And the idea that, we, that you know, 10 or 15 minutes was not enough to explore the post-traumatic stress disorder that he had. Mm. Uh, it, almost immediately, they began uh, working on coming up with the sequel to tell the rest of the story. And from watching the trailer, you can see different parts of Louis Zamperini's life. And here in Torrance, he truly is a legend. So how was it for you as his son being um, such a big part of the movie and producing it? Well, it's just amazing. I mean, they, they only make a movie about your dad twice. <laughs> uh, so uh, for me, it's, it's very exciting to be able to tell the rest of the story because it really is the climax of his life. You know, all that he went through, being the, the punk kid that makes it in sports, gets to the Olympics, uh, becomes a bombardier, survives those seven weeks at sea in a, in a uh, life raft, his uh, 27 months in Japanese prison camp, all that leads up to the point where he comes home. Uh, he's, he's got these horrendous nightmares that he's going through because uh, he was, as he was being beaten by his guards. Uh, he was internalizing all that need for revenge. And so it was manifesting itself in these uh, horrific nightmares that are, are portrayed in the, uh, in the new film really quite well. And, of course, then he finds release from that when he goes to the Billy Graham tent meeting in downtown Los Angeles in 1949, gives his life to Jesus Christ. His post-traumatic stress disorder is gone like that. And uh, then he... You know, he realized that he had forgiven his prison guards, including the bird, Watanabe. And indeed, a year later, in 1950, he went back to Japan and sought out his former captors and forgave them face to face. Wow, so there's a lot happening in just that one time for this movie. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who made this movie come to life, which will be released in October, correct? That's correct, and uh, one to be uh, mindful of is the producer, uh, Matt Baer, who spent 17 years on this project. Wow. Uh, he first came across uh, my father's story after the 1998 Nagano Olympics and worked very hard to get it to, to, uh, you know, to be in production. He was a producer on the first film, Unbroken, and then he's carried through to the second film as well. So. Uh, 17 years is, uh, is a long, I mean, that's, to some people, that's their entire career. So hats off to Matt. How do you make sure that parts of your father's life are captured properly? I'm sure it's a huge project to take on, but tell me about your role a little bit more. Well, um, I did get to meet with the screenwriter and the director uh, very early on. And, uh, you know, of course, when you have a script, 
they, they can take some license because we don't really know what the conversations mm -hmm. were between people, you know, 75 years ago. Uh, so I read the script and realized that they were doing a really good job at telling the story very honestly. There is nothing that is made up. There's nothing fictitious about it. All the people that are portrayed are real people. And it's pretty much exactly what happened. Who stars in the movie, and are there any details you'd like the public to know um, so they definitely come out and watch this movie when it's released? You said October 5th? October 5th is the release date, and uh, it stars Samuel Hunt as Louis Zamperini, and uh, it's just, we had a wonderful time going through all of the audition tapes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, you know, I, I looked at like 35 auditions. My sister, who's also an executive producer on the wow. film, uh, she looked at the same um, audition tapes, and we decided uh, independently of each other that Sam Hunt was our dad. And wow. uh, so he looks like him, uh, and he even runs like him. You'll see some of the running sequences in, the, in this film. It's, it's pretty remarkable. That is truly remarkable. And for people who, watch, who are going to come out to watch this movie and for the viewers watching the show, what do you hope people will truly walk away with after watching this movie? Because here in Torrance, your father truly is a legend and people know about him, but for people who may not have known about him, what would you like to say? Well, I think what, uh, what uh, people will walk away with from this film is just the power of faith and forgiveness. You know, my dad used to say that it doesn't do any good for you to hate somebody because mm -hmm. the object of your hate is not affected. Uh, indeed, Watanabe was on the other side of the world. He had no idea my dad still hated him. Mm -hmm. But by hating somebody, it's like drinking poison. You're destroying yourself from within. So for him to be able to come to the point that he can forgive the bird mm -hmm. uh, was just, uh, I mean, it's just a weight came off of his shoulders. It was, it was cathartic for my father to forgive the man. Tell me what you hope this movie will do for his legacy. Uh, well, uh, I, I tell you, I tell you what. The the day that he died, I looked mm -hmm. him in the eyes and said, "Dad, you're going home to be with the Lord today, but your work here on earth is not done." And indeed, his story will be affecting people for generations to come. And so, what I really hope uh, people get from this film is that uh, is that. Faith in God uh, can be a very powerful thing. It can help you overcome insurmountable ob obstacles and odds. Um, you know, for someone to forgive someone who treated him so poorly like the bird did, mm -hmm. I mean, humanly, this is impossible. But my dad would say, with God, all things are possible. And he would also say that he had to love the bird with the same love that God had for him when he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for his sins and my sins and everyone's sins. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, uh, that's the main part of this, uh, the, the, the main message for this film. And Luke, can you talk to us a little bit more about, um, you know, certain scenes you talked about the Olympics and there's very uh, um, specific scenes for people who do know Louis Zamperini's history, they'll know this movie is about him. Are there any other scenes that viewers will be able to recognize right off the bat? Well, the film starts out with a collage of uh, headlines, the Torrance Herald and other, other newspapers that tell the, the first part of his story uh, in, in a matter of a few minutes, just going from headline to headline to headline, taking him from uh, you know, uh, winning the interscholastic mile, going to the Olympics, being missing at sea, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, when he comes back. And so this film really focuses in on the effects of the post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder on his life and how it was, he was spiraling out of control. He was uh, self-medicating with alcohol. Mm -hmm. He was getting in fights. I mean, at the drop of the hat, he would take a swing at somebody. And so it really portrays the, that, that life-changing moment when he came face-to-face -face with essentially was remembering a prayer that he had on the life raft and in the, uh, in the prison camps saying, God, if you get me home from this alive, I'll seek you and serve you my mm. entire life. And so, you know, uh, four years after the war, he forgot all about that promise. And then that moment in, 
in the, the Billy Graham uh, tent in downtown Los Angeles where it all came rushing back to him. He suddenly remembered that he made that promise. He said he felt really bad because obviously God uh, mm -hmm. took care of his part of the bargain. He brought Louis Zamperini home, but my dad, he forgot all about his promises until that very moment. Well, Mr. Zamperini, thank you so much for coming on my show and talking about Unbroken Path to Redemption. For viewers who are tuning in, we're going to have the full segment online, and we were talking about Unbroken Path to Redemption, which will be released on October 5th, so you should all go out and watch it. Thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you.